This is an Italian traditional cookie that you find especially during the holiday season, otherwise known as Italian fig cookies. Let's make cucidati. All these ingredients are very readily available at your grocery store. I'm using a combination of Kalamata figs and Mission figs because we had those lying around. You can just use one type, whatever you want. Just two cups of figs. We're also gonna use some dried dates. These are very easy to find. You wanna be sure they're pitted because they're easier to chop up. This is going to add a lot of sweetness, but it also kind of helps the filling come together because when you puree it, it becomes super creamy. And then some raisins. A lot of families do it differently, so there might be different combinations of dried fruits. You might add some dried cranberries in some, or currants or golden raisins. This combination is what my great-grandmother did. So that's what I'm doing. We'll add a few more things, but let's get started chopping up our fruits. With the figs, you're gonna see a little hard stem on the end. You're gonna wanna remove that, and then just kinda chop them in halves or thirds just to give them a head start. Speaking of chopping, you are going to need a food processor for this recipe. If you do not have one, borrow one. In the old days, they would use a grinder or something like that. This is the modern day version of the kuchidati. So don't be having your grandmother's message me telling me I'm doing it wrong, okay? If you have a little dried fruit left over that you're afraid you won't use, these are delicious tossed in salads or roasted with some pork or chicken. So you know, it's not gonna go to waste or you can just double the batch. We've given our fruit a head start, now it's all going into the processor. Oops, got a little ahead of myself. All this dried fruit is a little hard for the blades to grind all at one time. So do it in two stages. Much better. After the first grind, we'll add everything else into the food processor for the second grind. And with our pecans, I've lightly toasted these. It just helps bring out their good flavor. Next, we're gonna add the peel of an orange. The orange really perfumes this mixture. It makes it just so bright and fresh. And then we are going to take about three tablespoons of the juice from the orange. I'm also gonna add in a couple tablespoons of water. This is where some recipes might also call for brandy. My grandmother, I guess, just used water because brandy was not written down on that scratch piece of paper. Sugar and spice and everything nice, so now it's time to sweeten it up and add our spices. We just used honey, so I'm going in with a quarter cup of honey. If you find that your fruit is not sweet enough, you could add in a couple tablespoons of sugar. And then for our spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves are what my family used. And then my sister-in-law's family used cinnamon, allspice, and cloves. So I'm just gonna do it all. We're going about a teaspoon of cinnamon, about a quarter teaspoon of allspice and cloves, and then an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. To me, nutmeg is kind of the strongest, so I don't wanna go overboard. And a quarter cup of honey. At this point, I'm gonna add back in that first batch of fruit that we ground and let it all come together. If it gets too tight, you can add in another tablespoon or two of water. How are we talking? That's what I'm talking about. Tastes like Christmas. The great thing about this recipe is that you can and you should make half of it in advance. The filling really needs to sit in the fridge and just kind of come together, all those flavors. So this is the great step to do the day before. Got it covered, I'm gonna chill it while we clean up and make the dough. Now for the dough, you can probably make this with everything you have on hand in your pantry. You might need to buy a little bit of almond extract or you can leave this out if you want. And this dough is so easy because we're gonna make it in the food processor. You've already got it out or you already borrowed it for your filling, so we're gonna make our dough in here as well. Keep it easy, people, keep it easy. Three and three quarters cups of flour. To the flour, I'm going to add a tablespoon plus one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt. Just pulse that a couple times. One grandmother used shortening and one used butter, so I'm gonna use both. I've got cold butter and I'm gonna cut it into cubes. One stick of butter and a quarter cup of shortening. After we pulse this, it's gonna have large crumbled pieces. That's what we want. Oh, I forgot to put the sugar in. 
half a cup of sugar. Okay, you can see it kind of looks like super coarse sand. And then finally, we're just gonna add in one egg and a half a cup of milk. And a teaspoon of vanilla, half a teaspoon of almond extract. All right, we'll turn our dough out onto a floured surface. Just kind of work it into <coughs> a little flour got my throat. Just kind of work it into a little disc. Then I'm gonna wrap it and chill it. You wanna chill it for at least an hour. And then it's time to make cookies. Chilled and ready to roll. You could even do this the day before. Spread out some flour because the dough is a little bit sticky. I'm gonna cut it into four manageable size pieces. I'm gonna roll it into a rectangle, eighth of an inch thick, and then trim the edges to form a rectangle. Now we take our filling and form a log down the dough. It's not the most attractive thing, but just wait. Dip your fingers in some water and go around the edges. This is gonna help seal it. Using a knife or a bench scraper, just help lift off the dough over the filling. And then just roll it up. Now, we always had them cut a little on the diagonal. I would always have them with little slits cut in the sides. These go on a parchment lined baking sheet. I'm baking these at 375 for about 12 to 14 minutes just until they're golden brown and cooked through. And maybe I'll clean up a little bit. And for our final step, the glaze. So this is just the old school classic powdered sugar and milk trick. About two cups of powdered sugar and about a quarter cup of milk. Easy as that. In true Italian fashion, you would take some of this white glaze and color it like a pale pink and green. So I guess I'm gonna do that just to keep it old school. Our cookies are done. Golden on the bottoms, flaky and soft on the outside. Filling's ready and now we ice them. Once they're cooled, we're just going to frost them by dipping them into our little icing that we made and then sprinkle them with our little Christmas lights. It looks pretty festive if you ask me. Cucciadari. We're just gonna let these set for about 20 minutes or so till the icing is nice and hardened. And that's it, folks. Another great thing about these cookies and why it makes them great for like a cookie swap is that they get better as they sit. So they're gonna get hardened a little bit on the outside, kinda like a biscotti, but the inside stays nice and chewy and full of flavor. So these are not like if you make chocolate chip cookies and then they get hard after a couple days. These are gonna stay just the way we want them for several days. If you wanna make a big batch of these and freeze them, don't ice them yet. Just make them and freeze them and then ice them right before you serve them. And that's it. That's the classic Italian cucciadati cookie or Italian fig cookies. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite family cookie recipe is. I would love to try it. In the meantime, I hope you'll give this recipe a try this holiday season. Merry Christmas. I'm gonna call my great aunt. Hi, this is Lee. I'm sorry that I wasn't here to answer your call, but please call me later. Thank you.